My next guest tonight is the former U.S. Secretary of State and five-term senator from Massachusetts. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Secretary John Kerry. Welcome back. Happy to be back. Did you read the editorial that's in the New York Times this afternoon? I read it about 10 minutes ago when you raised the issue. And that's about when we started writing the monologue, I know, too. I heard that. Well, what, what do you make of somebody who tries to reassure the public by saying that the president may be unhinged and mercurial and constantly lying and doesn't know what he's doing, but it's okay, there are adults in the room? Does this comfort <laughs> you in any way? That scares the hell out of me. Okay. No, you know, I mean, first of all, there is a reassurance. It means that for James Buchanan, he's no longer the worst president. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm a Harding man myself, so go ahead, yes. Look, uh, actually, it's really serious. It, it, it's, uh, it's foreboding in so many different ways because it really means... I mean, you, ha you have somebody stealing something off the president's desk in order to prevent him from making a decision. You have him ordering generals to do something, and within a moment of them being ordered, they turn to their fellow generals and say, we're not doing that. Did that happen when you were working <laughs> no. for the president of the United States? No. Did you ever steal a treaty off of his desk or anything like that? No, no. no it never happened. You know, Stephen, what it really means is we, we don't have a, a, a president, and, and we have a president who's there, but he is not, uh, capable of doing the job or living up to the responsibilities. And that, you can imagine what people all around the world are reading. I mean, I got some emails today from, from abroad, uh, friends of mine did. So what's going on? What's happening in the United States of America? You're the leader of the free world, but, but we have serious doubts about what is happening in your country. It's really scary. Foreigners, they're just like us. <laughs> But the, one of but the things that the person us, says you know? is that, that there's a two-track presidency. But that, that there's the president, and he, what he says sort of publicly, and then what's actually happening. Yeah, but let me be blunt about it. You're not supposed to have a two-track presidency. You're not to have, supposed to have people stealing things off the desk of the president. You're not supposed to have to have a resistance within the White House to prevent your president from breaking the law or doing something that's irrational and dangerous. You're not supposed to do that. That doesn't sound like representative and, democracy and, to me. No. It, it, and what should really trouble everybody, and, and it troubles me that it doesn't trouble certain people, is that members of the United States Senate and the House, who take an oath of office to defend the Constitution and defend the United States of America, are actually defending their own power, defending their own positions, and they're not defending the Constitution or the institution of the Senate. They're defending party and president, and that's wrong. It's just wrong. Well, uh, have you had a chance to watch any of the Kavanaugh hearings? No, I haven't seen any of them. I, I've been running around the city and I just haven't seen them. But they've been fairly disruptive. I mean, I the, have the seen Democrats that. I've have seen been the jumping news. in I frequently, the news. calling into question the proceedings, trying to get it uh, adjourned, saying that sort of it's illegitimate because they're not getting the information they want. There have been a lot of protesters, more arrests today. Well, Do, does, that, does that upset you that the decorum of the Senate is being violated, or were you guys never angels? Um, I think it's fair to say that the Senate has always had its warts. And it's, it's a complicated place. I mean, I can go back in time. When I first came to the United States Senate in 1985, Ronald Reagan was president. Mm -hmm. And vice president was George Herbert Walker Bush, a really good man, great man, a great, and, and great president for our country. But at that time, I walked onto the Senate floor. Teddy Kennedy escorted me into the Senate. I'm there for my first moments. In You're the, the great, junior senator from Massachusetts. I am the very junior senator. I haven't even been sworn in yet. And, and here it is, this incredible institution, and you work hard to get there. And I'm thinking about, wow, what are these guys talking about? And so I walk across the floor. Ted walks me up to three or four senators in a cluster. And the first words I hear on the floor of the United States Senate are, from a southern senator, George Bush couldn't sell on a troop train. 
I swear to God. And, and I said to myself, I, I, I. God, I hope we I have said to believe to, that. I said to myself, I said, now, I know that doesn't come from Federalist 85. <laughs> it's not from the Declaration of Independence. It was stunning, and, and it was a... Still real... is. <laughs> Still is. Got to say. Yeah. But, the, but the, they're great stories. They're in my book. I have a lot of these stories in my book. Well, that, yes, uh, you have a book right here. Book. And the book is Every Day is Extra. Correct. Um, it's, it's not a campaign book, you say? No, no. This is a, this is a memoir of my entire life. It's very personal. Uh, I lay out a lot of things I've never talked about before. Mm -hmm. And I tell a lot of stories of the Senate and elsewhere, stories about, you know, Strom Thurmond and... Stories and you'd like voters to know about? Uh, yeah, well, that's why... No. <laughs> voters! <laughs> I mean, we need more voters in America, frankly. Mm -hmm. so, Anyone who might vote for you no. in, like, three years? No, no. I have no plans to run for... You have anything. no plans to run for office? I doubt I'll run for office ever again. You doubt? I doubt. <laughs> You doubt you'll run for office ever again. Because a lot of people put out books before you they run for you're office. You're going to get rid of your beard. Or get I have no doubts I will be getting rid of my oh, beard. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, ladies and gentlemen, that's a major announcement. This beard is disappearing. Well, we have to take a little bit of a break, but we'll be right back with more Senator John Kerry. Stick around.